Welcome back, everybody. Uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, start flying along here. Uh, we are here today to talk about how to create a CMA. And I'm going to tell you that your CMA is the backbone of your job as a real estate agent, um, whatever valuation model you're going to come up with. Um, and we use them in our office in a variety of ways. One of the ways is that we work with them with buyers. And with the buyer, we work with them when they've obviously found a subject property because we want to prove the, to the buyer what the value of the property is and whether or not they're paying too much for the property or, or whether or not they're getting a really good deal. Um, and depending on the market, that conversation is going to be really important. Hey, Mike. Um, so let's take a look at a couple of things. So, so that's for the buyer side of things. From the seller side of things, which is what most people do, um, from the seller side of things, we look at it in terms of trying to get the seller to be reasonable on price. And I, I think I did this presentation a while ago, and I mentioned that in my 41 years of doing real estate, I've had one seller ever tell me that I was too high. Um, in, a, in, a, in what I thought the value of the property was. Um, in most cases, the seller wants more than what it's worth. And, 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 and as we're walking into our listing presentation, and we have a whole class on that, as we're walking into our listing presentation, we're also often uh, having to defend ourselves against the, the uh, pillows and the ghoulias of the world um, that uh, have told them told the seller that their properties worth far more than than it, it really is. So remember, and this is my overriding theme. My overriding theme is that no one can replace you. So they 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 can't create a tool that will think the way that you do. And so that's what we're going to go through today. We're going to come up with some. Uh, we're going to come up with some strategies on creating our CMA. Again, the CMA is the backbone of your, of your business, um, and so you really need to figure that out. If you get to a point in your career where you just kind of like, you know, eh, put the, you know, kind of dead reckoning, um, but at the end of the day, you still got to look at the numbers. So uh, that's what it's going to boil down to. So we're going to talk today about how to create the CMA, and I'm already thinking, because I've been going through this program all morning, I'm already thinking about another class that we'll do. Maybe next time we'll discuss some real comp analysis and, and, and digging into it. But in the meantime, here we are. So uh, you are at the Greater San Diego Association of Realtors. Uh, well, you're probably not there right now, but at least you're, you know, under, you know, we're, we're, we're talking from that position. There's my name. There's my email address. Um, we're going to be talking about the subjects. Uh, and, and Mike, thank you. I've condensed this significantly. I'm not an attorney. I do not give legal advice to the public. Um, although I do get accused all the time of, of giving really good advice, whatever that advice is. So um, I do a lot of trial work, um, but mostly as an expert witness. So um, the uh, information that we're going to talk about in here is information that you should be able to get from your broker. Go to your broker, say, hey, how do I do this? And then uh, hopefully uh, uh, you'll get uh, you'll get some assistance with that. We're just here to supplement what the broker's doing um, and maybe provide a different perspective on things. That's all, okay? So please consult with them as appropriate. There's my name. There's my, you know, or again, there's my email address. I blew it up a bit so it's easy to see. Um, and I do send out a newsletter once a week that uh, contains the clickable links to all the webinars that we're doing. So if you didn't get it, let me know. I'll send you the copy of this uh, last Saturday's um, uh, link. So like for today, this will be our presentation, will be our CMA presentation tomorrow morning. We're going to be doing how to handle counter offers, mobile counter offers, and backup offers. In the afternoon, we're going to go in and we're going to be doing the RLA. We're going to be knocking that one out. That'll be the end of the RLA. Um, and then uh, Thursday, uh, we'll be doing um, home snap in the morning. Uh, and then in the afternoon, we'll be doing uh, the RPA. Next week, I'm pretty excited because we're going to be doing the new forms. Um, you know, it's about time that we did that. So uh, we're going to be doing the new forms updates and, and go through all that. So anyway, that's where we are today. I'm going to go ahead and uh, get us back to reality. Uh, let me pull us out of this screen. And the way that we do that, gosh, I hope I had, yes, you can see it. Okay. So let's go ahead. I'm going to uh, pull up our... Um, our uh, topic of today. So the assumption here, of course, is that you are in the MLS. And, and as always, please remember, you can uh, click on the Q&A field uh, and to ask me a question as we're going. And, and uh, it doesn't do a pop-up for me, so I might be a little delayed, um, but I look at it quite frequently. So if you have a, hi, Jarapa. Um, if you have a question, then, you know, please put that, you know, uh, let me know that you have that question. Okay. All right. 
Okay, so the assumption here is that you've uh, worked your way into um, the, the MLS. Uh, as you can see from the top of the screen, I have a lot of windows open, but that's just, you know, that's just, I'm always working on something. It's, it's always fun. You know, my life is, is a pretty fun one. So uh, I'm always doing something. So what we're going to talk about today, again, I have CMAs, the purposes of which are either to uh, identify a price value of a property for a seller or to confirm a price for a buyer. So let's go ahead and get started. Um, I think it's, that it's a, it's a pretty intuitive process, um, but, but you got to get in and do it. And, and so, um, and, and you know me, I always mix into it the, the practical side of real estate and, and how we use the tools that we're given. And, and that's what we're going to do again today. So there's a number of different ways for you to get here. One of the ways is to go over here to my resources and from resources. And I apologize, I have to look over to this other screen because it's much larger and I can see it a lot better. But I'm going to, if I click on resources, I'll see that I've got a, uh, um, where did my thing go? Uh, CMA. Oh, goodness gracious. I love it. They moved it around on me again. Okay, never mind. CMA, real obvious. Here it is. CMA, I was going to show you the other way and then bring you back to this. So this is the way that I do it. I go to CMA. I've got a couple of choices in here. I can either create a presentation, which you can do, um, or I can use a saved presentation. So in my case, I actually have a couple. Um, I can uh, use the CMA preferences wizard, which is what I was looking for on that other screen. I would recommend that you do that. Uh, and I would do that first. And so I'm going to do it with you really quickly. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on it because we've done it before and I don't want to bore you with it. But please slow me down, okay? If, if I get to something that looks a little tricky, then you know, slow me down. Ask me the question, please, okay? I want to make sure that you're okay. I'm only given an hour to do this presentation, and I could, I could clearly spend a lot more than that. Um, so we're going to do the preferences wizard today. We're going to get through it, um, and then we're, I'm going to show you the final result. But we will get all this done, okay? Now, I can, I can add subject properties, and I can also maintain properties that I already have in the program, all right? Right? So, so let's start with the preferences wizard because I want to make sure that I get the details down of what my presentation, what I want the ultimate result to look like. And so we're going to go ahead, we're going to click on the preferences wizard and it says right in here, and I did this class for a, an office the other day. Um, and, and if you want your office, you know, I'll be happy to do it for them as well. Um, but, but as you can see, we've got, so we're going to create some defaults. Okay. So we're going to click on start down here on the bottom. You can see I've got 14 pages to run through. Um, I can do a cover letter. Uh, and uh, it's interesting because I've already created all this. Uh, and, uh, you know, you never know when you're doing things live, you know, things just don't always work the way they're supposed to. But anyway, I've already created a cover letter. Uh, I've already got uh, my resume. Oh, there it is. There's my resume. My cover letter apparently has disappeared. There it is. Okay, so there's my cover letter. Um, I, so here, here, my advice. Okay, my advice is create yourself uh, essentially your cover letter. I'm using what we refer to as my short bio. So sometimes I get people, you know, I'm going to be speaking for, you know, the newspaper, or whatever. Can you send me a short bio? So I have this little short bio that I've created, um, you know, all about me kind of thing. And you need to remember that, you know, this is that time for you to be all about you. All right. It's important because you might be competing with other agents to work with the same client, so you want to shine, okay? And you want to put things in there um, and, and you want to say neat things about yourself. And people say to me, well, I'm so new in the business that I don't know what to put in. A, you know, I don't, I haven't done anything. It's like, no, well, the answer is, yeah, you have. I mean, you got to the age, you got to at least 18 because that's the age required to get your real estate license. And so you, you've done some things as you've gone along. And then if you're here today, chances are pretty good. You're a real tour member. So some of the things that I would put in there, like you're, you're a member of the uh, San Diego Association of Realtors, you're a member of the California Association of Realtors and you're a member of the National Association of Realtors, you call yourself a real tour and you subscribe to a higher code of ethics. So you see, I'm writing it as I'm sitting here speaking. Okay. I have some other th things that I've done, but that doesn't make me any better than you. So I'm going to encourage you to sit down and think about the things that you've done and, and, and put those into a nice little cover letter that you will have. That's your homework assignment. Uh, and if you want and do it and send it to me, I'll be more than happy to go through it with you. Um, and, and help you out. And that obviously extends beyond this class. Okay. So, um, but again, I'm here to help and, and that's what I want to do. Okay. I don't get paid for that. I just, but I just want to see you do well. Okay. Remember what I've always said, folks, if you look good, you make me look good. So I want you to look good. Okay. All right. So uh, you can see, I put all this in here, make sure in your cover letter at some point along the way, you've got your DRE number. Um, and that's a DRE requirement. 
make sure that you've got your um, affiliation with a brokerage. So my brokerage is Burke Real Estate Consultants. Uh, and so I want something that, you know, I can, I can put a logo in here. I can, you know, you, you don't have to, as long as the name is very, really clear in the logo that the name is in there, things like that. That's what the Department of Real Estate is looking for. And oh, by the way, they're also looking at the, the, uh, the uh, code of ethics is requiring that you display your affiliation with the broker as well. So those kind of go hand in hand, the DRE and, you know, the law and the, and the uh, code of ethics. So I wrote this in advance. Obviously, I wouldn't have had time to do this just this second. Um, and this is going to be my page two. Then I'm going to go to my page three. And up here at the top, it says agent resume. And again, here's a whole list of stuff that I've, I've made up. Um, no, that's not true. I didn't make this up. This is good stuff. Okay. But, you know, I never intended to do any of this stuff. I just kind of lived my life and continued to do what I do normally. And then it just kind of accumulated. And fortunately, at some point, somebody convinced me to sit down and write it down. And that's where my CV came from. And by the way, the original wouldn't fit. I mean, it was way too much. It was like six or seven pages of stuff that, you know, so what? I never cared about what I've done in the past. I want to know what I'm doing today. So, you know, but but your client's going to see this and this is what the ultimate presentation is going to look like. And I'm going to show you how this is going to make you look really good. Okay. All right. So that's already in there. You've got all the tools and stuff. Again, I'd put it in a Word document or something else that you can copy and paste it into here. Um, uh, and that's just the way it is. Company information, you can't change that. That's your broker's responsible for that. So whoever your broker is would have, have already put this in the program as the default information that that, that is their information. Um, and I'm reminded that I need to go in and check what see what that is because if my agents are creating CMAs, I want to make sure that they've got the right information in there. Okay. All right. So our corporate DRE number, you know, things like that. Okay. Any questions so far? No. Thank you. Grab my little uh, T. Okay, so um, I'm going to have several analyses. I can use subject property number one, subject property number two, and this is for my detail. I don't know any reason to change this. I'm going to accept the default. I would suggest that you can too. I mean, later on, if you get to a point where you're really enjoying doing this, and I hope you don't, because if you really enjoy creating all this stuff, then you might be on the technical side of things and we need to get you outside and talk to people. Okay. That's the important part of real estate. So I'm going to click on next again. And obviously I can go back anytime and fix something. Um, some results. And, and then I have, of course, Google thinking I'm asking it a question. So um, anybody know how to turn that off? Um, anyway, so um, now I'm going to go into my comparable report. So we have our horizontal and then guess what? We're going to have the vertical in a second as well. And again, I am flying through this. You know, I, I want you to go play with this. Um, and then if you get if you get into a stumble later, just let me know. I'm, I'll help you with it. Okay. All right. Um, so I'm going to I'm going to end up using the vertical because I like the vertical. The vertical creates like columns like you would see if you were in an appraisal. Um, but, but let's address what this is anyway. So I can uh, click here to customize the values. Um, I have already reverted to the default. Um, there's a, uh, there was a webinar um, out there that I attended some time ago that um, had certain things that they didn't think were really helpful in any of this information. Turn that fan off so you can hear me. Um, and so anyway, I've reverted to default. So I'm just going to take the default information, cancel out of that, takes me back to here. Um, I don't display the subject property uh, because this would do it on all the pages. So I, I don't think that's necessary. I think that depending on the number of comps that I have, I may only uh, have it on the last page. So display subject on the first play page. Uh, or don't display it at all. Let's go ahead and change it. So it only is going to display it on the first page. Because remember, if I'm doing a CMA with a buyer or a seller, with the, either one, I've already picked the property that I want to make the CMA about, right? So if I pick that property, then I want that to, I want them to see that at the time that they see the report. For the seller, I want them to see the house, not the home, okay? For the buyer, I want them to see the home, not the house. So for the buyer, it's an emotional decision to purchase. And so I want them, oh my God, that's the house I love. I want them, to, I want to remind them of that uh, on, on the first page of my report. And then for the seller, of course, I call it a house, not a home, because it's something that we need to, you know, unemotionally, we need to factually get rid of, okay? We buy on emotion, we sell on fact. 
that, okay? So I check the box here, display the subject property on the first page only. Um, down here where it says, choose which remarks field to use, I don't uh, check any of these because it can mess up your report. Um, it can give you a lot of useless information that may be in a, in a remarks field that you just don't need, okay? Um, so I'm just gonna leave it on none and then I'm gonna go to the next page and now I'm at my vertical report. And again, I'm gonna show you an example of all this in a minute. Notice I'm halfway through it already. So I'm on, on page number seven of 14. So we're moving right along at a pretty good clip. Okay, so again, I'm gonna take a look. I'm gonna look at my CMA field preferences to see what those look like. And, um, and here they are. Uh, and again, you know, here's the MLS number. And, 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 and by the way, these are the coded fields. So if you look at your listing input sheet, um, these are the corresponding fields to each of these values, okay? So I'm gonna uh, go ahead and again, accept the default on all this, but I could add other things. Like for example, in here, it's got, uh, um, does it have, even have uh, bedrooms and bathrooms? I hope it does. Um, there we go, baths full, baths half, uh, and then there's my coded fields but there might be something over here that I wanna to add to it. So for example, how about uh, Mellow Ruse? So uh, I can start typing Mellow um, and, and there it is. There's my Mellow Ruse fee. I can add that by clicking on this, clicking on add, and that will add it to my CMA. And that will obviously pull up whether or not the property has a Mellow Ruse associated with it. I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to, uh, but that, I'm just using that as an example of something. I, as I start to type it up here, it will give me the drop down field um, down here. Okay, everybody good with that? Uh, yes, okay. Um, and then I always have to double check. Now, I, yep, you can see it. Okay. <laughs> All right. Okay, I'm going to revert the default because I don't uh, I don't have any reason to be looking at um, the the uh, those fields. Okay. That being said, here we go again. Display the subject property on the first page. That's important. Uh, and I'm going to click on uh, next to take myself to the next field. Okay. So I always get a kick out of this because you know I, I do a lot of presentations um, and a lot of times I, I told you this before that if something's not working, don't assume it's you. It could be the program. I, I ran into a series of glitches in a couple of webinars recently where I'm sitting there waiting for something to happen. Nothing's happening. And then, and then it says I've got a bad internet. I was on a webinar this morning on the East Coast and, and Boy, the internet connection was horrible. So uh, again, hopefully you can all hear me okay. So my packet CMA summary is whether or not I wanna remove any of the fields from the packet. Um, and they'll only these, these will only be reflected in the CMA packet. So you'll see that the packet itself is pretty simple. Gives me the address, gives me the MLS number, gives me the status. I'm gonna show you examples of all this in a minute. Okay, and then, and then zip code, uh, and then is it for sale or is it for rent? And then I, I'm gonna go back to my revert to default because I like to make sure that I'm only using the stuff. You know, I, you know, I can get clever, I can do all kinds of stuff, but again, if I'm gonna spend you know, days on this, then it's not gonna be anything that's gonna, you know, I'm gonna get really good at creating these, but I'm not gonna be really good with people. So that's, uh, uh, well, maybe I'll also be good with people, but, but you can overdo this, okay? All right, so then here's my CMA comparable property statistics. I'm not going to touch this. Um, part of the reason is because it creates my grids uh, and the grids are going to be important. So I have my X and my Y axis. I'm not going to switch those around. Some of you are a little more technical than I am. Um, and I just like it, you know, keep it simple. And so, uh, but feel free. I mean, if you want to do that, my list prices are going to be in red. My sold prices are going to be in blue. Um, and if I want to change the colors, of course, I would just click on it. And I can change the colors. Okay. All right. I'm going to click on next. And good, now we're gonna to get to the seller's net sheet. And I know that last month, I kind of glanced over this really quickly. I have to tell you that a net sheet is really important. And again, this is talking to the seller rather than you know my use for the buyer. Um, so the assumption on this one is that it's gonna to apply to the seller. And I'm gonna show you how to eliminate this, this um, property, this, this slide in your presentation uh, in a couple of minutes, because obviously you wouldn't do, do it for the seller. Or, sorry, you wouldn't do it for the buyer, but you would do it for the seller. So um, what I did was I got here ahead of time, obviously, and I created some value. So I said, well, the seller says, um, I want to get this much for my house. 
and and then I think though it's worth a different value. So, but the seller is going to be the one that sets the price that the house is going to be listed for. The buyer will set the price that the property will sell for, and that's my conversation with with my seller is that you know we need to be sensitive to the fact that the buyer is ultimately going to select the price. Okay, and you want to price the property in such a way that at least you get an offer. If you price it too high, you won't even get an offer. And, and then you have the seller call and you have a, how come you haven't brought me any offers? How come you're not showing the property? Well, you price, it's overpriced. And here's my CMA wizard that says, this is how much I thought it should have been priced for. So now it starts off with a low and a high. And these are things that you can change, okay? Um, and, and so, you know, maybe you change low to, to uh, practical, you change high to wish list, you know, something like a visionary or something like that. And then you start putting in values. Okay. So in my case, I put in 900,000 and you can do this yourself. If you're following along in your CMA wizard, you can do this yourself. And I recommend that it's a, probably a pretty good idea um, to do something like this. If you have an idea ahead of time before you get to the seller, or if you're like me, I do a lot of my presentations live on the fly. Um, I don't know. I live dangerously. I just kind of like doing that. Um, and, and so, uh, but they seem to go pretty well. But if I'm sitting in front of the client and the client is watching what I'm doing, it helps them to understand how we got to where we got to rather than just seeing a generic, you know, here's the net result. You know, if you do this, you do that. I'm going to show you what that means. So I put in a price high or a, a low price of 900. Again, this is in column format. Um, so when we get down, to, I'll explain over here, when we get down to here, it's, it's going to be a continuation of the column. So here's my low price, the, the price that, you know, maybe I think it's worth. Here's the price that the seller wants for the property. Um, I put in 6%, but, you know, whatever you put in, you know, to do what you do, right? I mean, um, it's going to be a business decision on your part subject to your broker. So in, in our brokerage, we have a minimum amount. All brokerages are required by DRE regulation to create a minimum standard for their agents. So we have a minimum standard. So I just picked a number. Okay. Um, so that's what we did. I put in uh, 6% commissions. It's the same commissions on both. Obviously, maybe I decide to take a, a you know, uh, the seller says, well, will you take 5% if we sell it for 900? And, and I say, why? And they say, well, because I'm taking less money. And then my response is always going to be, well, so am I. If you take less money for the house, you've reduced my commissions correspondingly, but whatever. Some business models have you taking a different commission if it sells for this much uh, versus another figure. Okay. So I put in six, that's where it is. 6% of 900,000 automatically computes to 54,000. 6% of a million automatically computes to 60,000. Okay. And then I, and then I move further. So what I suggested a second ago was that these columns over here correspond to these here. So where you see my low, that's what these numbers are going to be similar to my high. That's what this column is going to be similar to. So if it was me creating this formula, I would have moved these two up top here over to the right so that they would be directly in line with these. Does that make sense to everybody? Um, I want to make sure that we're clear about that, okay? So then moving forward, again, this is a seller's net sheet. Now, I'm a strong believer. Uh, you can look at this sheet. You can, this is all the details, and you can know that that's not everything. And that's the part that always makes me nervous is, is do I have everything? Okay. And so I would uh, recommend that you, um, you know, get rid of some of that liability by having maybe your escrow officer, your title person come up with a sheet that says how much things are. But, um, and, and again, the escrow people that I work with, we get within 50 bucks. I mean, it's really close. So I'm using this as an example. Um, and maybe this is a good thing to use in the initial presentation. And then when the offer comes in, get that other sheet from escrow that says, here's how much it's going to be because at that point, see, this doesn't take into account the day of closing. This doesn't take into account the taxes, the proration of property taxes, things like that. This is just a general overview picture, which, you know, I have no fault with that at all. It might be good to get that in front of the seller at the time of the listing because the seller is going to look at the fact that the number one uh, cost to them, the real estate transaction is your commissions. And, at the, and, and so the sellers in their brain says, you're going to make all that money. And my response is always, yeah, but look how much you're going to make. Okay. So, you know, that kind of thing. So, and, and I'm going to show you how I do that. So, so here it is. I put in a first loan, first loan amount of 500,000. And by 
the way, whether the seller gets 900 or a million, it's still a $500,000 loan, right? Okay, so that's not gonna change either high or low. The second loan, I didn't even bother with that. But as I'm entering in numbers, you're gonna see that every time I enter in a number, it's gonna do something for me down uh, at the bottom of the page. So title insurance, I just made it up. Um, you can, if you have your friendly neighborhood title company, they'll tell you what those figures are based on those sales prices. Okay. But you know, like a lot of times you have your escrow company do this. They don't know how much the title company is going to charge because they don't know half the time what the final sales price is going to be until you go under contract. Okay. And they're, they're clearly not going to know what the lender's fees are. All right. So those are things that you get, you know, as you get closer to that, but this is more of a general thing. And again, I like this for purposes of the presentation because it introduces the seller to the fact that they're going to have costs involved in the sale. Okay. And I don't want them coming back later on and saying, you're going to make $60,000. And I'm going to, you know, we're going to see, watch how I do this. Okay. So title insurance, I made up a number. You could grab the, you know, your, favorite friendly neighborhood title companies uh, chart, you know, because they have to follow their published rates supposedly. Um, and you could figure those numbers out, but I just kind of threw it up in the air and I figured, what is that? 1%. I just put in 1%. So on $900,000 sales price, I figured $900 in title insurance. Again, not based on any reality, any fact, any experience. I just grabbed a number. Uh, over here, I assume the same 1% if the seller gets a million, right? So my fees, most of my fees in a real estate transaction are based on a percentage of sales price. So that for me, and, the, and those percentages don't normally change depending, even depending on what the price that the seller gets for the property, okay? Escrow fees, again, made up a number. Uh, home warranty, 455, I guess. Um, I don't really quote home warranty fees because that's quoting insurance and I don't have a securities license. Uh, tax stamp, I figured 1.1%. Uh, I don't even know if I did the math right, but um, you know, and, and it's not, by the way, it's not 1.1% all over San Diego, for example. Rancho Santa Fe is what, 1.38%. Uh, Del Mar, 1.28%. So each part of the county is going to have a different uh, stamp associated with it. Pest inspection, we don't do them. So there wouldn't be a cost to the seller. Um, you know, we let the buyer do that. That's the buyer's job, investigate the property, not the seller's job. Um, and then the termite work. And by the way, that is still probably the number one thing that we counter out. Um, and tomorrow's presentation, I'm going to show you our, our counter offer, our standard counter offer. We've already written it because we already know what we're going to have to tune up in the offer. And I think you're going to have fun with that. And, and then you're going to maybe go create your own template. Um, and remember too, that we have updated our forms as of yesterday, we have new forms uh, in the template and we also have revised forms in the library, in the template. Okay. So um, decide if you want to, like, for example, square footage uh, and lots size advisory. Um, I'd recommend it's probably it's a really good form, um, but it's, it's an advisory and, and I would recommend it. And as of last night, when I was uh, speaking to a couple people about their transaction, it, it still wasn't in there. So I'm hoping that by today it is, but it wasn't important for me today to figure it out. So termite work, again, it would have to be a request for repair. So I can't imagine what those numbers are. Maybe the seller's already had a pest inspection. Maybe the seller's already got a quote on termite work, I would put those values, uh, those dollar amounts in there, uh, assuming that the buyer is gonna be willing to accept that report. So as I'm adding numbers here, and I can continue to add things, I can call something else. Down here, I can call it um, repairs. Uh, and then over here, I can put in a value of, of $10. Um, and I'm just, again, doing this for laughs and giggles. Uh, and then I'm going to put uh, $10 over here because the repairs aren't going to change hypothetically uh, just because the price changes. Uh, and then as I go, as I tab out of the field, watch how my numbers are going to change. So I tab out of my field and it looks here like my seller's total estimated closing costs are going to be $66,000 on the sales price of $900,000. Um, the net to them is going to be $333,000. So I promised you earlier that I would explain, you know, the fact that the seller is looking at at my $54,000 commission thinking I'm getting the lion's share when in fact I'm not. The seller's getting the lion's share uh, in a transaction. On the high side, if they get a million, they're gonna have $73,000 in fees and that's because everything is based on a percentage of sales price and then they're gonna walk away with uh, $426,000 net to the seller. So I like that net proceeds kind of thing. Most of your programs have that available. Uh, and so I'm gonna go ahead, I'm actually gonna leave repairs 
numbers in there because I think that's kind of a fun thing to add. Okay, everybody good with me so far? Uh, I'm going to start accelerating. I'm going to go to next, um, and I'm now on page uh, slide 11 of 14 as I wait for the program to roll around. Okay. So um, about final comments, the page is actually still loading. Um, you can tell if you look down here on the bottom left, it says waiting for cash. So uh, I think we're all waiting for cash, right? Um, so anyway, here are my final comments. Um, and so I, I did this the last time I put this in here. And I really like, you know, kind of what we said, although I would obviously tailor it for each transaction, okay? Usually my argument with the seller is I'm trying to get them down on price. I'm trying to get them to be reasonable um, so that we can get the property sold. And yet in this market, I don't know what that price is. So my comment, as I've said to you before, is that you can price the property to sell it or and 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 uh, you know you can price the property too high and wait for the market to come to you or you can price the property reasonably and create your own market so you know I'm sitting on a property right now that was overpriced when we took the listing uh, and then boom we get hit with the the uh, Pan, pan, what are they calling it that now? They call it a pandemic. I call it panic attack or something. Um, you know, whatever that thing is. Okay, so you know they they have this thing going on that all of a sudden it got really quiet. So I'm already overpriced, and then it gets quiet, and then we're kind of starting to come out of that now. I go multiple offer, and I'm seeing that across the county, multiple offers on properties, and and uh, I, I've been saying this now for months. You know, are you prepared for what's coming? Because when this is, when we get through this, and, and it'll never be over, right? But when we get through this, then, you know, be prepared. Because this is, and it's in all price ranges. I'm seeing properties in the $2 million price range just going nuts right now. Uh, our prices from, uh, I just did a market analysis, 1.2 to 2 million is, is just completely out of control. I mean, up 27%, I mean, it's just nuts. So, so be aware that, you know, these are kind of skills that you need to be honing now while we come back. Okay. All right. So here are the final comments that I came up with. Um, and let me, uh, I'm going to expand the screen right there. There's a button that says full screen. Um, this is where I believe the property should be priced. Okay. And then I have four criteria that I look at in my CMA. So I look at my active and I tell the seller, this is the wish list. This is the price that everybody would like to get for their home. The pending is, and the sellers think, well, it sold for this. And it's like, no, it didn't. That is the price that it took to get an offer. We don't know if that's going to be the final price or not. That'll be at least what it took to get somebody to write an offer on it to go under contract. Okay. So that's a good number to work off of. Active, not such a great number. Expired, clearly not the right number because under an expired listing, that means it was priced so high it didn't even get an offer. So, you know, here you have an expired listing that is not the price. So when the seller is looking at these numbers, you know, what do they want to see? They want to see the expired, you know, they want to see, wow, that's the number I want to get. But in fact, that isn't the number that it takes, that, it's, that the buyer is going to be ready, willing, and able to pay. And so that I have under my sold property. So my ready, willing, and able buyer is willing to pay this amount of money for the property. So here's the actives are always high. The pendings are, are usually right around, you know, a little bit less than that. Expires are always higher than that. And then my sold is always the lowest one, okay? And that, that's going to be true even in an improving market, which is what we're in right now. So, you know, again, we're in uh, June. It is the beginning of the summer. And so, you know, some of us are thinking that we're halfway through it, but the answer is, no, nah, you're not even a third of the way through it yet. Uh, and and this is this is going to definitely be a high time. There was a time not that long ago that our that our market was fairly cyclical as far as seasonal variations. So in the fall it got really really quiet, folks. We haven't seen that since 2012. Um, you know all that went out the door in 2012, and now it's just a constant stream. You know we'll have little hiccups like this um, that are affecting property value, but they're not affecting property. They're affecting the numbers of listings. They're not affecting the property. The sales prices of property. I don't know if we, arguably is it the value. Um, you know, somebody said to me once, a good friend said, uh, you know, do two by fours go up in value? <laughs> and the answer is no. It was a rhetorical question. I mean, the answer is the two by fours don't go up in value, but the location 
Asian does. And so this isn't Indianapolis. This isn't, you know, uh, Iowa. This is, you know, we, we have to think in terms of San Diego. Those aren't bad places, but they're going to have a different economy. And we can't really equate their economy with ours. And we can't, and, and we really can't uh, equate the national statistics to what we experience in San Diego County. I, I've said it before, we're clueless. We don't have a clue what's going on in the rest of the world. Now, there have been four major changes in economy uh, during my career in San Diego over these many Many decades and I never noticed a one. So what are you doing today? That's what's going to be important. Okay. All right. Um, good. So that's going to be my page number 11. And this is, I just wrote this in here. And again, if you want copies of any of this, if any of this is really gets you excited, let me know. I'll send it to you. Um, happy to do that. Send me an email though. Remember Burke, uh, Kevin at Burke Real Estate Consultants, because and que any questions you put in here, I'll be able to answer now, but I, but I can't save email addresses and stuff like that. So I lose everything. So I click my next button and now I'm going to pick a theme. What do I want my theme to look like? So I've, I've clicked basic for my uh, CMAs, but just like anything else, I can change my CMA. I can change my, my preferences in my CMA and that's what we're doing. So I can, I can go to contemporary and then over here, it's going to switch to the picture for a contemporary one. There's my contemporary one. Uh, and then uh, I can go to my elegant one and, and, and you can't change any of these. You, you can only use the, the seven that are the six that are here. Okay. Um, and, and, uh, but you know, they, it gives you six possibilities of different, different themes that you could have. Okay. So, um, I switched to modern and then I'm going to go to next. And then now I have my opportunity to kind of talk a little bit more like if I have a logo or a, a slogan or a call sign or something like that, I can put that into the footer. I don't have to have a footer, but I like a footer. So, you know, I was uh, in a market um, not that long ago where there was an agent there claiming to be number one in the whole area. Um, and, and so I got so tired of hearing that, you know, I'm number one that I decided you're number one. Yeah. You know, I'm, I'm not number one and they can talk about how great they are and, and they weren't number one. They just said that they were. Um, and, and so I said, no, you're number one. And so that's what I, I grabbed that as a tagline and I've used it ever since. And this goes back 35 years. So there it is. You're number one with us. You know, it's like, forget about who says they're number one. You're number one. You're the one that's really matters. Okay. All right. And so I did a center align. Um, I can add my picture. I can add my logo. If I want to uh, change any of this, I click on the button. So Here's my cropped image um, for my images that will show up later on on the presentation. Here's my office image. You won't be able to change your office image that has to be done by your broker. Um, and then I have other MLS images, things like that, that I could use. Um, but if I go into my images and I want to upload a new image, I just click on uh, the upload the new image. I can, I can upload my own, my own image. Um, I happen to be using the one uh, uh, from um, the circle of excellence uh, that I was so proud to be um, uh, uh, apparently excellent. Um, no, uh, you know, I, I, I don't know. Somebody took that picture and I, I just, you know, it, it just for me, it was very flattering. Uh, it was just picture me up there going circle of excellence. There it is. So, you know, you find a nice photo that you like, you know, and, and, and realize, remember, I've always said this one, you know, remember to always take your sense of humor to the, to the appointment. You know, so, uh, and I do, I have a good time. Okay. So hopefully you do too. So, um, I can change my uh, picture. I can't change my company logo, but I can change my picture. Um, and then I can align it and that's what that does. And, and folks, then we go to the next button and we're, and we're at the end um, of this part of it, which is the preferences wizard. And I do like disclaimers. Okay. I do like that. Um, like mine always says, you know, I'm a lawyer, not an attorney. I do not give legal advice to the public. Um, you know, I give advice to uh, lawyers and judges. Um, but, you know, I don't give it to the public. I'm not barred, not interested. There's no money in it. Um, and, and so um, I, do, I do the disclaimer. Uh, and that's the fact that, you know, we don't know about any of these things. I don't put in my listings buyer to verify all because that's just like the silliest thing I ever heard. Um, I was involved in a transaction recently where the agent recommended that the, that the buyer get a physical inspection by licensed contractors and things like that. And, and I remember a judge, I was in a trial once and I was uh, testifying again as an expert. And, uh, um, and I remember the judge asking about the, that language in, in the listing that said, 
BTV FCQO. Yeah, I don't even know what the hell it was, but you know, something about, you know, you go inspect the property rather than, you know, the agent. And so the judge says, you know, why would the agent shirk their, their civil code 11 or civil code 2079 duty to inspect the property? And it's like, that's what they try to do. They try to pass it off. So uh, you please don't do that. Right. Do your job. Okay. And so, but I do like to put in the disclaimers, um, and, and again, square footage, number one litigated issue against realtors in California. Uh, and so I'm going to you know, make sure that I put it here. Um, and uh, I'm not going to put it on anything except what's in the MLS. And I won't change anything unless I'm willing to defend it. Okay, good, good. Okay, everybody sees nice little square footage thing. And, uh, and, and it says, please be advised, some properties may be sold as is. And as you know, in California, the sales of real property are in as is condition. It's a statute. So there's no obligation. That just means the seller doesn't have to fix anything. It doesn't, it doesn't mean the seller doesn't have to tell you about everything that's wrong, that they're aware of, okay? All right, and again, I do trial work on that, so uh, fine. So I click on next, and now it takes me to, you have successfully set up your preferences, um, and, and now I want uh, uh, your CMA preferences. Now I wanna go to just my general preferences, and I'm gonna show you why, because this is kind of cool. Um, and when I get in here, now I can pick what's gonna show up on my presentation. So I created all that really cool stuff, but let's take a look at it in action. So I'm gonna click on go to preferences, Checking for questions. No questions? Okay, good. Um, and so it takes me right to my CMA. It's under preferences. See over here on the right, preferences. Okay, uh, make sure you're still on my same screen here. Yes, you are. Okay. So, you know, I, I could have gone uh, up to here to preferences and clicked on CMA and done my setup from in, set up from in there, but I couldn't fill out the stuff that I filled out. So this, you know, this is assuming now that I've already filled those things out and now I can go ahead and, and decide what I'm going to use because see here, there are no preferences available for the cover page. Changes have to be made within each CMA presentation. So now that I've created here for the last 45 minutes, you and I, the default language, now I, it's go time. I've got some really cool stuff that I can utilize because I can't change it from here. I've got to go in there and change it. So I'm going to decide, hey, I really like cover page. So I'm going to click on the link that says cover page and it's going to say success. Now, when you do an actual CMA, it will include that cover page. Because remember, before all I was doing was creating the default information, but I might, you know, it wasn't necessarily going to occur in each CMA that I do. Okay, I like my cover page. I like my cover letter. I like my agent resume. See up here on the right-hand side, it keeps showing me, wow, look at that, we're, we're, they're all showing up. I like my company info. You know, I like my broker. Please be nice to your broker. Your broker is, is there to defend you for one thing and, and they're your source of help, okay? Um, I like this little question thing here. I can click on this so you can reorder them and stuff like that. I like to keep the default information because I figure brighter minds than mine have figured this part out, okay? So subject property detail. Um, summary of the adjustments, if any, okay? Some people don't like those, don't wanna go that deep. So they don't have the summary of adjustments. They don't want the comparable report. Um, I told you before that I like the vertical report. So I'm gonna click on vertical and I'll show you why when we look at the actual presentation here. Okay, so I like vertical. I probably wouldn't use both. Okay, I probably wouldn't use the summary of adjustments. You did it, you know what you did. And you know, how much time do you have to explain all this to the seller? And this, by the way, makes a pretty nice presentation that you could have laminated. Again, it would have to be for each individual property because there are gonna be some values that are gonna change. So then I have my CMA summary, um, comparable party statistic, comparable uh, price analysis. I liked my seller's net sheet, okay? So, so far I'm adding, see, they've saved that uh, for me as well. So far I'm creating my general stuff that I want included in each CMA, okay? Map of the property, I think that's always a good idea. Remember my final comments? I like my final comments. How about my determining value? I think the determining value is really cool. So from this point forward, these are all things that you can add or you can either have it or not have it. I like their work on determining value. And so your homework assignment is to go create one of these yourself. And I think you're gonna find that some of this is actually pretty neat. I know companies, brokerages have spent a lot of money creating a graphic that's already here for you 
for free. Now, you know, though there's of course contained logo and all that kind of stuff, which is fine, but I think some of this is pretty good. Like value of a real estate professional. Uh, I think you have huge value. All right. I have had people say, well, I don't have any listings, so I don't have any value. And I'm like, well, I don't know about that. You know, when I go on a listing appointment, if I don't have any listings and it's happened, right. I go on a listing appointment and the seller says, well, you know, uh, this other guy just came in here a minute ago and he's got 60 listings. And I go, wow, how does he do it? I don't have any, if I, when, when you list your home with me, not if, when you list your home with me, you will get 100% of my attention, okay? Because I'm not floating 60 listings. So, I, and, and then when I have 60 listings, I say, well, you know what? Obviously, I've got a lot of experience. I'm good at what I do and all that kind of stuff. But you no, know, it doesn't matter what my number is. I can always make that work, okay? And so this is, again, part of our, how to create the winning listing presentation. I don't want to get into all that because that's a whole, that's a whole great class that we do on a, on a uh, Wednesday morning. Um, so that's coming up. Uh, again, this week is going to be the, uh, counter offers uh, on um, tomorrow, but uh, the following week, I think we're back into the, the might be lawsuit avoidance. Anyway, we're, we're doing great stuff. Okay. Marketing planner, you know, what do you got to do to get your house ready for sale? I like that. Maximizing your first impression. Remember, you always say that you never get a second chance to make a good first impression. So you want to make sure that that's a good one. Uh, showings and open houses, you know, uh, I'm sorry, take the dog for a walk. Okay. Uh, you know, you leave, you know, we don't like you to sell her at the house during the open house or during a showing, right? Because it just always seems to confuse everybody. And we want the buyer thinking that they can move in and not personalize the fact that the poor seller is leaving. Well, the poor seller wants to leave, right? And so sometimes your buyer says, oh, I really hate to put them out, right? Or they've got so much stuff in this house that, that, you know, it'll take them forever to move. I just can't do that to them. And it's like, you're sitting there going, please do it to them. <laughs> they want to move, right? They're moving to a bigger house. Okay. That kind of thing. Okay. Selling versus timing intelligent pricing pricing the property properly is the first step you ever take to in your marketing plan okay um, where the dollars go that's kind of one of my favorites i had somebody do one once where you know because they always they're always worried that argument about you know well how about the commissions and it's like you know will you reduce your fee well if i reduce my fee i'm reducing everybody's fee right so here my broker gets you know the other agent gets half my broker gets half of that and then by the time i get done i've got shoes you know that kind of thing so we do we have a lot of fun with that presentation but uh you know I, I just never never do reduce them but you know you do whatever you do and and uh you know it, we can't talk about discount because i don't know what your fee is in the first place so that's none of my business um so anyway uh moving checklist you know turn off the juice, you know, turn on the juice to the new place, stuff like that. I can also upload a document, which I think is a really cool feature. Okay. So real simple stuff. You know, I, I can, I can upload a document that maybe I've created. If you're big into graphics and you've created your own stuff, this is a great place to do that. Okay. So, and remember what I said earlier, I can move all these things around. So if, you know, maybe I don't use half the stuff that they've got, maybe I create my own moving checklist, okay? Um, there's a really good agent uh, in Carmel Valley who created one that was, it was exceptional, it was pages long of things that the seller needed to do to cooperate and assist in the marketing of the property. And that included, get your stuff out, okay? All right, so real simple, I go over here, I choose my file, whatever that file is gonna look like, I grab it here. Okay, and then I, you know, I can I put in a description. I have to put in a description, um, and then I'm going to be limited 20 megs. Um, if you've got a 20 meg document, you, you're pretty eloquent. Um, ain't going to go. It's not going to go up there. Okay, um, and then uh, you click on it and, and that kind of thing. Okay, so I can save it. In this case, I'm just going to cancel. Okay, everybody go with that. Um, and then and so this is all the stuff that's included in my CMA. Okay. And then when I get down in here, what are my page layout going to look like? I'm going to choose my themes. Okay. And most of this, you know, here you go. You get to see it again. You know, here's my footer. There you go. You get to see it again. Here's my disclaimer, you know, and so, and on and on. Okay. So these are things that you've already decided um, that you're going to do. And then, and then what about adjustments, if any, um, and, and again, I, I try not to get too technical, although, you know, when the seller says, you know, I want, you know, a million dollars for my house, neighbor down the street sold theirs for uh, 900, I figured mine's worth a hundred thousand more because I raised my kids in this house. That's not a winning argument. Um, and so, you know, those are the things that, that's the adjustment that I'm doing on the fly, right? Um, versus, uh, you know, they've got red tile, you know, on the floor and, you know, Spanish tile or whatever, I guess we can't say Spanish anymore. Um, but you know, they've got tile on the floor, 
um, stuff like that. So, uh, and then I can have my adjustments, my calculated adjustments and all that. I can also, uh, whoops, sorry, pulled it up. Um, I shouldn't have clicked on that. But anyway, calculated adjustments are in here. Um, then I go down into my report setup. I like my vertical view. Um, and again, this is all, if you're gonna start, you know, it's almost essentially starting over, okay? So this is what it's gonna look like. Um, I like all those preferences. I'm gonna click on save, uh, and that's gonna save all of these. Um, and if I want to change it, I can obviously go back later on and change it. I can also drag and drop. You see that, how I can move things up and down. Um, and, and so, again, I've only checked on the stuff that I really want to have in my uh, CMA. Okay, everybody good? Uh, and I clicked on save, so that saved it. So let's now go in and let's take a look. And I want to create one for you really fast. Now, any questions so far? Uh, let me see. Uh, yep. Nope, nope, no questions yet. Okay, so let me go ahead and I'm gonna take a look at my CMA um, and I want to uh, create a presentation because we've already done uh, CMA preferences wizard. Now I want to uh, create one using a specific property, okay? So this is, again, the other one, pretty standard, you know, just go through the paces, but here now, what is what am I gonna call it? Um, um, I've actually already done one, uh, let's call it mission, and it's gonna say, no, you can't do that. So we're gonna say mission two, we're gonna click on continue, um, and notice at any time, based on the, on the default that I've already created at any time, I can click on generate presentation, okay? All right, so let's, uh, I can either create a new subject property, I can load a subject property, or I can use an existing MLS listing. So let's, let's grab a, a, a subject property that I already have in place, and that's gonna be this one here on, on uh, mission again. I keep picking on that property. Um, and so um, no image here, but the image will show up later. Save, print, email, edit, you know, add photo. I can do all these things. And once again, I can generate my, my uh, presentation. I can do one of two things. I can go over here to next, or I can just click it down here. So let's go ahead and go to next. Okay, I can, I can create a new client. I can select a client from the contact list. Uh, let's see, who do I have in here? I've got myself in here. Um, so I'm gonna pick on, uh, pick, whoops, I got Linda, uh-oh. Um, <laughs> I'll get in trouble. Public name, Nancy. Uh, if you know me, my sense of humor, uh, I'll answer the phone sometimes. This is Nancy, especially if I know who's calling. Um, and that always freaks them out. Save, print, edit, delete, fine. Let's click on next. Wow, we're doing good. I'm gonna get this done. And, and again, listen, folks, you know me, this presentation's over in like five minutes, it, it still goes on for you. So please send me questions, um, get me, uh, there, there's no material to give you, but, I'll, but I'll, I'll help you with things to put in. Do your own, send it to me, I'll, I'll help you. Uh, you know, I teach sales and marketing for the real estate professional at UCSD, I've just been doing it a long time. Um, I can add a comp, um, and uh, so I click on add my comps, um, which uh, comps am I gonna like? Let's see here, I'm gonna add a comp uh, and we're gonna, I'm gonna go down here, mission, um, search, uh, and I'm gonna say, oh, I like that one. It happens to be the subject property. I'm gonna add it to my CMA, selected, yes. Okay, and then boom, here it is. Uh, and then now I'm gonna go to next. Uh, he says with confidence. Um, my calculated adjustments, if I'm going to do them, uh, and uh, it'll load that field for me. I click on next. It should take me to my adjustments. Um, and again, this would be adjustments based on the differences between the two properties. Um, and so as you can see here, I've got my, uh, um, you know, here's the subject property. Here's the comp that I'm using. So the subject property, there are no pictures um, because I'm contemplating taking a listing, the comparable property happens to have 23 pictures on it because it is the listing. Okay, so that's why you have those two things. Um, if I go down through here and I decide that, uh, that my property only has, um, um, it has a half bath, that's gonna add to the value of the property. And so I'm gonna go ahead and add, let's say I add $2,000 to the value. Uh, and then I go forward, I click on next. And this is uh, going to save the, uh, the, oops, yeah, there we go, save the value for me. And then once again, pick a theme. Uh, again, my modern is, I, I picked modern because I like that one. Um, I clicked on preview to get an idea of what that's going to look like. That's what it looks like blown up with my name on it, the date, my company affiliation, all that stuff. Everybody good? 
Okay. Um, and then I'm going to go ahead and go to next. Now, see, now remember what I said up here. It says generate presentation. I could, I could just go to that if I'm comfortable with all the rest of this setup, but I want to show you what it looks like. Here's my um, footer again. I'm going to click on next. And again, once you do that wizard, it does all of this for you. Um, so you're not having to reinvent the wheel each time. Um, there are a lot of programs out there that look at a lot of different data sources, but you know, frankly, this is probably all that you need. Um, here's my here's my disclaimers. I'm going to go to next. Notice over here on the left hand side, um, I'm heading into presentation setup. And here's, uh, so here, this is the part I wanted you to get to. So see here where it says presentation setup. This is the part I said earlier, we clicked on the things that I wanted generically across all of my CMAs and here they are. All right, all these values, okay? So now I'm gonna go to next, oh, preview the page. Let's take a look at preview page. There's nothing wrong with doing that, okay? All right, so again, this is my uh, CMA thing, uh, big deal. I'm gonna click on next and now my next field, um, uh, nuts, I think it's just gonna take me to uh, the very next field. So it will go through all of these one by one. Um, I'm not going to do that today because I wanna move us forward to seeing what the ultimate result is. Um, Mike, would you agree? So there's my presentation information. This is my cover letter. And then it would go to my agent resume. So again, I can click over here or I can click the next button over here. There's my CV, all that kind of stuff. So let's take us all the way down here to um, step six, which is view presentation. And, and this is the very final step. So save the CMA components. Sure, let's save them. And right now, it's, uh, we're going to generate the presentation. So as soon as it's done saving all that stuff, you, don't, you only need to save it once. Um, I just didn't show you could do it. He says with calm. I'm going to click on next. And now it's doing the work for me, okay? So this one's the one, what do we call this? Mission two, because I already created mission one. Okay, so mission number two, do not close the CMA tab. It is working. It's assembling all the components that you asked it to assemble, okay? And it's converting everything to a PDF, which is what you want. And I just think this is the coolest thing. So now it's gonna include all these pages. So this is gonna be a pretty robust, it's gonna be 20 pages, okay? So, you know, for those of you who, who have heard me talk before about that CMA, you know, what do you take on a listing appointment? If you wanted to take a presentation, then, then this is a good one. You don't want your client spending the entire day reading it. You know, you don't, clearly don't want them proofing it. So, you know, less is better. Most of it is about what you are doing when you were on the presentation, okay? So, um, uh, you know, again, I think you walk around the room, you know, walk around the house with a client with a listing input sheet, you know, the MLS listing input sheet, and, and you're checking boxes as you go. I think that's the biggest thing that you can do. Um, it really adds your confidence when you know what the next question is, okay? So here's page one. Um, this is going to be my... Um, uh, presentation. Uh, I wish it would go on a full, oh, here we go, full page. I'm going to switch to presentation mode. Okay, uh, let me make sure you can see that. Yes, you can see that. Okay, so here's my presentation. This is what's so cool. So I'm going to hit my down arrow on my mouse. There's my all about me cover letter, right? There's my resume. Okay, that's just this year. <laughs> um, here's my company info, which obviously, you know, down here I've got, uh, you know, the, the logo and all that. Um, here is the subject property detail. We hurried through this, so it's not going to be as, as good as what you would do. Um, there's my comparable report. This shows the property that our subject property. So that's going to be the property that we're, we're uh, going to be taking the listing on. Here's the actual, you know, listing. So I'm using my own listing as a comp. All right. And then down here on the bottom, the residential summary statistics. Oh, down here, adjustments to see here where it says adjustments. I added two grand because we had an extra half bath and it raised the value of the property from what this, what it is in the MLS, which is 749 to 751, it added the two thousand dollars for me versus you know the wish list is a million 174, which is clearly not going to be the number. Okay, here's my summary statistics, my highs, my lows, all that stuff. Again, my down arrow. There's my summary report. These are all the things I asked it to do. Shoot, I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm going over. 
Okay, so we're gonna hurry up here. So here's my estimated closing sheet. I love this part. This is the part where I hammer the seller to be real, okay? And then guess what? I might have the seller sign it, okay? They said, this is what I told you. And, and, and if we have to come back to this later because your property is sitting, I'm gonna remind you that I told you 900 was the price, not a million, okay? All right, and then there's my map of the property. There's my addresses of the two. Um, there's my final comments. So y'all see what I'm talking about? It makes it pr pretty decently looking. Here's my determining value. So now they see something other than what I'm, obviously I wanna say things that are consistent with this. Okay, there's my value of the real estate professional. I think you have tremendous value. There's my negotiating. Uh, there's my marketing planner, gives the seller something to do. Here's my, you know, here's Mr. And Mrs. Seller. Here's what we do to maximize our first impressions. Here's my showings and open houses, clear clutter, number one. One, okay, uh, turn on the lights, be welcoming. You know, you go to a model home, think about it that way. You go to a model home where they're selling a subdivision, get ideas, right? My dad used to sell model homes, uh, used to sell new homes uh, back in the 60s and 70s. And, and so, you know, they would go out and buy downsized furniture to make the rooms look bigger. I thought, wow, you know, we're not, today we actually make the rooms bigger and then we buy regular furniture. But, you know, just think of those things. So here's selling price versus timing. Um, importance of intel remember i told you this was going to be good stuff Int importance of intelligent pricing um and uh and you know pricing the property right um here's where all the money goes um we have a more elaborate one than that it's kind of cool because when you get down to the, the listing bro broker here's the listing agent it looks like i've got the biggest part of it but but then i take out a third of that for taxes i take out a third of it for marketing and expenses and i'm left with like 50 bucks and so i always ask the seller i say okay well what part of my commission do you want me to cut out? You want me to cut out the marketing? I mean, whatever, it's going to be a quid pro quo. It's going to be a trade-off, okay? So I like this stuff. Here's my moving checklist. You know, these are just good little things. And again, uh, I've seen some agents do some really good, um, you know, better ones than this. Um, and literally, they, the, the sellers love it, okay? And so, in, and the bottom line is, are, what service are you providing to the seller, okay? Okay, so um, this is, uh, now it's gonna lock up on me. That's kind of normal for the for the thing, uh, but that's my moving checklist. So is everybody good? Um, God, I hate to do it to you, but I gotta get going. Um, I'm supposed to end this thing here at uh, 1230 and I've gone past your lunch hour by just a little bit. I apologize for that. Um, hopefully you will please play with the program, get get in into the, into the MLS, do all this. Folks, if you wanna go ahead and, and create a, uh, a presentation, then uh, and and send it to me. I'm more than happy to help you with it. Um, you know, if you want me to critique it or whatever, I can't get into your MLS, right? We don't share usernames and passwords, but um, I can give you some suggestions. So if you decide you want to do it, send it to me. I'll take a look at it. Don't be embarrassed. It's just you and me. I'm not going to put it up on a screen and say, hey, look what Bob sent. You know, I'm not going to do that, okay? So um, any other questions, anything else I can help you with? Um, thank you all for being here. I, I wish you tremendous success and I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. We're going to be doing how to handle those counter offers and, and we're in the middle of them right now. And, and, uh, you know, it's just that market. You need to know how to deal with it. Um, you need to know how to deal with counter offers. You need to know how to deal with a multiple counter offer, and then you need to know how to deal with backup offers. So, um, look forward to seeing you then. I wish you all the very best and thank you for attending today.